This podcast is brought to you by GBS, where you'll find flexible education that fits around your busy lifestyle. For more information on GBS courses, visit globalbanking.ac.uk. Well, it's uh, it's very good to have Leo Falcone here today and to be speaking to him, who holds a, uh, a senior position. And uh, Leo is Group Managing Director, GEDU. Is that right, Leo? Yes, uh, that's correct, Stephen. Yeah, really good. And um, I'm going to talk to you about a few things, really, about your journey. Mm. And uh, it seems a lot of our kind of interviews or conversations about journey, about life journey, mm. about academic journey. So mm. I-, I wonder if you could tell us a bit about your life journey to begin with. Absolutely. I'd be very happy. And thank you for inviting me today. It's a, it's yeah. a pleasure to be here. And um, really, it's been interesting just reflecting back, you know, over the years of my journey and mm. just thinking about our students here at GBS and, and what they've been experienced. And it's quite interesting when you when you move on and, and you, you're sort of further down your sort of career trajectory, you know, yeah. sometimes you forget about that journey that you took to get there, mm. you know, so it's a great mm. opportunity to reflect on that. So, you know, when I was at school, um, primary school, my teachers, um, weren't particularly happy with me. <laughs> uh, and part of that, part of the school reports, or often, very often in the school reports, was let's go something like, Leo's yeah, very, very, uh, got lots of potential, but he's he's just not focused. Yeah. You know, it's, he, he's a bit distracted. Mm-hmm. And actually that went right the way through to my secondary schooling as well. Little did the, these teachers know that I had a passion from when I was very young. Now, my my father worked on building sites all of his life. And of course, we grew up, all of the children grew up on build, on the building sites. And I just absolutely love that, mm. right? So, mm. so any minute I had off school, I would be down the building site, I'd be working with my dad, um, school holidays, you name it, that's all I wanted to do. So really, from a, from a very early age, you know, this passion, I thought was really giving me a career path, but what it was doing was teaching me lots of skills, and I didn't really know at that time, you see. And part of those skills were really about, you know, managing the building site, organizing all the materials, organizing all the, you know, all the, the resources. So I would spend most of my time, even at school, thinking about, the building projects mm-hmm. that my dad mm-hmm. was working mm-hmm. on, you know, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. so I, I I just loved it. Yeah. I absolutely loved it, and uh, I always felt myself for sort of continuing the family business. So what that meant was that you know school was a secondary thing for me, and when I was seventeen, I decided that I was going to leave school. I think I'd started my levels, but I only went halfway through, and I went to work uh, mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. my father, uh, and. I really enjoyed that. I loved it. Um, and I sort of continued there for quite a number of years. And um, and for me, I thought that's what I was going to do. You know, that was going to be my, my career. Mm. So um, I think, you know, really the message that I want to sort of convey with that little story is that very often we are doing things in our everyday life that we don't know what they're going to translate into you know then they're going to bring opportunities to us that we might not realize at that time you know and the opportunity that that passion brought to me was that I managed to work on some of the largest building sites um, in the place where I lived um, and I became a manager I managed from the age of 18 19 I was managing teams mm-hmm. uh, on large mm-hmm. construction sites so so that that gave me a lot of project management skills a lot of strategy skills a lot of people management skills yeah. So that was sort of the early days, yes. you know, yeah. the real start, yeah. the basis that yeah. I had, you know, yeah. and, and it was driven by this really strong desire to work hard and to and to mm-hmm. be committed mm-hmm. and passionate about something. Mm-hmm. And I bring that today right yeah. the way through yeah. to all the roles that I've done. How, when, were, when was the turning point? When did you realise that the, you had these skills and that you could use them in, an, in other ways? You know, yeah, I, I think through, through the, the love of doing something. You know, mm. you build them yeah. up, don't you, yeah. through osmosis. Yeah. You know, you don't, yeah. it's not like mm. you're actually saying, I'm learning how to do this, please. Yeah. Yeah. And it's quite interesting because um, I, I felt like, uh, you know, by the time I'd reached uh, maybe early 20s, that, um, that even though I had this passion, I felt like I wanted to do something different, mm, right? Mm, 
I didn't quite know what that was. And mm. like many of this, our students today, they won't know no, <laughs> what no, it is exactly no, they no, wanted no. to do. So, mm. so I thought about it for a little while and I thought, well, it could be something in construction or it could be something completely mm. different. Mm. So what I did is I took myself to night school. Good. Okay. Mm. Uh, and I was working during the day and studying in the evening. Mm. And I had a general idea that I wanted to go to university. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, and I didn't quite know what I wanted to do. Mm. Okay. So, um, so I, I did the first year, I did English and maths. Mm. I did okay in the English, mm. the maths, I chose a really difficult, uh, I think it was calculus or something, yeah, yeah. and I mm. just did not scrape through. Mm. Mm. So I went back the following year and I did English again and mathematics. Great perseverance. Uh, great perseverance. <laughs> um, and got the right marks and then applied to go to university. Mm. So I had an interview with the um, with the provost of the university, my first university, and she said, you know, what would you like to do? Why are you coming? You know, and I, and I said to her, I said, look, I, I don't know exactly what it is that I want to do, but I have a certain vision in my head mm. that I, I want to uh, better myself. Yeah. I want to help other people and support other people in whatever yeah. way I can. Mm. And I really want to fulfill my potential, yeah. you know. Yeah. And she said, well, that's really exciting. And she said, well, what, what, what course do you think? And I said, well, I think I'm going to do psychology because a friend had told me about psychology. Yeah. Yeah. And I mm. thought that's quite generic enough. And then I can move into a specialization later on. Yeah. So, um, so I started my, my course in psychology and... Um, it was a liberal arts university, University of Notre Dame mm -hmm. in Australia. And as a compulsory prerequisite, uh, we all had to do a philosophy mm -hmm. uh, module, mm -hmm. right? So I turned up on the first day at university, very unfamiliar territory for me, mm -hmm. didn't really know what the process was. Many of our students will be feeling the same yeah, on their yeah, first day, you know, they would have been working mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I was. Mm -hmm. And now here they are in this completely different environment. What do I do, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's 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 the next step? You know, so it was quite interesting that um, yeah, I attended this lecture, and then, and then, well, then I I you know I was in the lecture theatre and the lady, the lecturer, stood up and she said, you know, good morning, everyone. Today we're going to talk about Plato. <laughs> <laughs> and over the next 45 minutes, I felt the same passion that I'd had when I was a small kid, you know, yeah, working on the yeah. construction sites. And I thought, yeah. wow, this is really, yeah. this is me. This is what I want to yeah, do, yeah, right? Yeah. So, oh, Stephen, I just embraced this wholeheartedly. Mm. Sw went straight down to the admissions office, changed from psychology to philosophy, and and in the next four years were just intensive yeah, uh, yeah. philosophical studies. I, I found that really interesting. Um, you know, for a number of reasons. Or oh, for you know, firstly, that you're kind of using transferable skills. Yes. Uh, which is uh, and actually, well, that unexpectedness of of you know, uh, which would be our students might 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 not kind of understand some of that. That yes. that idea that you're that whatever you've whatever experience you've had in the past can be useful for whatever subject you're studying. Absolutely. So you know, it's a big leap from working on a construction site to studying Plato. Yes. yes. Yet there's some things you can use, aren't there? In Absolutely. That? All of those things around planning. Yeah. You know, yeah. how much time do I need? Yeah. Which bits do I need to do yeah. first? You know, what's my goal what's my objective here mm. how do i build towards my objective yeah. you know they're all small build, building blocks yeah. aren't they yeah. and that's yeah. that's the analogy Absolutely. is building blocks Absolutely. building sites so so mm. i think that that's a really strong powerful thing for me that yeah. that actually as you pointed out those little things that i learned as i was growing up actually prepared me even though i didn't realize they yeah. were preparing yeah, me yeah definitely what was what was your uh, what was your family's attitude to your your trajectory of education then well that's a very interesting <clears throat> question because obviously my father felt that i was going to you know take over the business and actually mm. my brother who's a, a outstanding mm. uh, professional he's he's now running the business uh, mm. and and mm. moving it forward but mm. but but I, I felt as though there was something else for me and yeah. my parents Parents had not been university educated, so they mm. they didn't yeah. really know how to support me through that journey. Yeah. Yeah. But actually, during that time, when I think about it, this lady that I mentioned, the lecturer Ruth Abbey, yeah. you know, who's still a friend and she's working at um, in the states at the moment, still as an academic. 
um, and also uh, Professor Ian Thompson, who was the head of the department, took mm. me under their wing, you know, mm. because they saw the commitment that I had to yeah. to learning and, yeah. and to understanding and to, and, to, and to maybe one day becoming mm. a, an mm. academic as yeah. well. So yeah. they really supported mm. me through that. Yeah. So I think, I think, you know, if home environment isn't, maybe what you feel might be conducive to mm, full-time mm. study. Actually, there are people on campus, there are people around you at yeah. GBAs yeah. that yeah. can support that, can help you through that journey. Yeah. But, you know, it really you really need to show that commitment yeah. because yeah. that's that's what we respond yeah. the most yeah. to, people that are really committed and passionate about yeah. what they're doing. Yeah, and I, I, I echo that. I mean, and I've spoken to you about this before. You know, my own background, my father was in construction, didn't yeah. really understand yeah. what I did. He he grew to appreciate it, and he yes. didn't understand it at the beginning yes. because he couldn't see the return. I don't think yeah. you know, and that, <laughs> so it's right. very similar to our <laughs> very our, similar. We've yeah. spoken about this yeah. before. Yeah. It, is, it is very yeah. similar. Um, you, I just wanted to say to you um, about um, uh, it's often said people make their own opportunities. Uh, mm. Do you think this is true, uh, and particularly maybe in your case or just generally? Yes, I think so. I think so, and and, and maybe just continuing that story of what happened next. I think. Might bring that question out, I think, mm, because yeah. because when when I when I uh, was in my fourth year, my honours year, um, the university offered me some tutoring work, tutoring work, uh, yeah. mm, uh, because mm. they knew that I was going to be an academic. They knew I was going to go on to the PhD, so that so mm. I, I gained some experience teaching. And I I taught mathematical logic, mm. uh, business ethics, and uh, ethics one hundred and one, a couple mm. other courses which I really enjoyed. Mm. Um, and for me, I was very happy to be mm. an academic. Mm. And my professor at the time, Ian Tom Thompson, he brought me over to the UK mm. and introduced me to some contacts. And mm. and uh, and from that point, I decided I wanted to move to the UK. Mm. This was in nineteen ninety nine mm -hmm. to pursue a PhD here, which mm. I did. Mm. When I arrived, I had very little. I didn't know anyone, mm, um, mm. and I started to um, uh, embark on this program. Mm. And and I only knew one person really in London at the mm. time, and I met him at a pub. <laughs> <laughs> as you do, uh, as, mm, as mm. you do. And uh, and he said, "Oh, well, what are you doing now?" And I said, "Well, look, I've just arrived. I've just started this PhD program. It was at the University mm. of London, um, and that's going to be me for the next three years." And he said, "Well, what have you been doing?" And mm. I said, "Well, actually, you know, I've been tutoring. Mm. I've been doing quite mm. a lot of work around business ethics, organisational culture, and just spoke to him about some of the things that I'd been teaching." Yeah. And he said, "Oh, he said, can you come to my office tomorrow?" And mm. I said. Okay. Mm. So I went to the office and I met three or four people mm. and they were trying, they were architects, mm. right? Mm. Yeah. And never have I, would I have thought, you know, I'm going to be working at an architect's consultants yeah. company, yeah. but actually they were really interested in organizational culture and, yeah. I, and I helped them sort mm. of flesh out their, their service provisions, proposals mm. around, around that, that mm. piece of work. Mm. Mm. And I worked with them for many, many years, you mm. know, um, mm. I think it was seven years. Yeah. And that just came out of a conversation. Mm. And again, based on skills that I'd built up, yeah, which yeah. I didn't really realize yeah, yeah. were going to get me this job. So that that and that can go all the way back to your construction work as well. Absolutely, isn't it? Yeah. yes. And, but also that thing, time and time again, when we when when I interview people, it's that seizing opportunity, yes, saying yes to something, yes. and that's something our students will will understand. Well, it's salutary for them, isn't it, to say just take the risk? And, Absolutely, and, take the risk, and you never know what's around the yeah, corner. You yeah. know those conversations that you have about the things that you've been learning and the things yeah. that you're interested in. Yeah, they're the things that that prepare you for when that door opens. Yeah, yeah. when that door opens. And you're standing there and you say, I know about this. Yeah. I can help yeah. here. Yeah. You know? yeah. um, and it was quite interesting because um, it, was, it was my work uh, with, uh, at that consultancy and architecture mm. firm that um, I worked with the BBC for many years and delivered mm. two buildings for the BBC Fantastic. in White City. Very good. Mm. Um, and, uh, and, and through the work on those buildings that actually won numerous awards, mm. I was mm. headhunted into Deloitte's and oh, uh, I went yeah. to work at Deloitte's mm. and, yeah. uh, and and I learned a huge amount at Deloitte. It's a, mm. a fantastic firm and yeah. really in terms of understanding business and mm -hmm. high performance and all mm. of those things is really the holy grail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that was a, a fantastic opportunity for of me course, to learn course, those yeah. things. Yes. Um, and, you know, it also at the end when I finished at Deloitte, I went into some 
consulting work around leadership development mm. after mm. that, and mm. then and then the global financial crisis hit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and then we were all many of us without any work and mm. a very uncertain future. Yeah, you know. So what I did then, Stephen, was I thought, well, I'm going to go back and study. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and and I actually uh, had two offers, one in Sydney and one here at the University of London. I went and studied economics. Mm. Mm. And I, I studied economics um, in the uh, full time. Uh, mm. And of course, uh, economics involves mathematics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and it was quite interesting how um, my previous uh, attempts at mathematics were, were okay, mm. but actually, it was intensive, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, advanced calculus. Uh, mm. And I just absolutely loved it. Yeah. I just absolutely loved it. And I did that course for a year, graduated at the end, very intensive. But that that education was very life-changing as yeah, well. Yeah, you know, so yeah. any of our students that are thinking about postgraduate work, yeah, I definitely. highly, highly recommend that because yeah. what it does is it really starts, allows you to hone in on a particular subject, yeah. and really get to know it yeah, in a very deep, deep level. And there's a kind of sense of lifelong learning, isn't there? The kind of, you don't Indeed. just stop. You uh, don't what? just stop, you know, depending on what, what the economy is doing, depending on your own personal situation. Yeah. Now, I, I had to sponsor myself through that, yeah. that year yeah. of study. Um, but I did so, and I actually took on quite a lot of debt to actually get mm. through that mm. course. Mm. But interestingly enough, the next phase was very similar to the, the job at the architecture mm. firm. And, and, and actually what happened is that I went and spoke to a gentleman to help him. who mm. was a mutual friend. Yeah. And it turned out that this person was the vice chancellor, as the um, CFO at um, the University of Sydney. Mm. Uh, and we had a bit of a conversation. Yeah. Uh, and he said, this is what I need to do. And I said, well, I think I can help you with that. Mm -hmm. And then the next day he offered me, you know, a role. Yeah. yeah. And again, that was out of a conversation. But interesting thing about that is I would never have thought that I would be working for a CFO. Mm -hmm. But it was mm -hmm. because I went and did the additional study yeah, and I had yeah. the mathematics and I had the economics yeah. knowledge yeah. Yeah. that he was actually able to say, yes, this person will fit in the team. Yeah. So, I mean, do you find it, did you find any of these points daunting and, uh, and, and, you know, that you had to just, just steal yourself to get through these? Yes. Yes. In times there are, there are those challenges and you just need to push the, through those. And I think, you know, the message that I would have for our students is, you know, you don't always have to have a clear endpoint. No. You know, as long as you're you're following your instinct and you're yeah. you're doing what you love, mm -hmm. and you're putting in the hard work and the time and the commitment, yeah. Yeah. those opportunities will flow themselves. They yeah. will come to you. Yeah, yeah, and and I suppose you'll also uh, you'll also agree. I, I hope you agree that, that all learning is a challenge, isn't it? Um, it, it is. It, yeah, you have to push those boundaries. Yeah. You know, a, a bit like my experience with mathematics. Yeah. You know, yeah. you have to push through and you have to get to the other side. Yeah. And that takes a lot of work. Yeah, you're a better man than I am with that. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. And and uh, and also sacrifice as well, Stephen. Right? Yeah, you know, um, you know, your friends mm. might be out enjoying the lovely yeah. sunshine. Mm. Uh, you're stuck at home reading or yeah. or yeah. doing formula or whatever it is. Mm. Uh, that's going to pay off. Yeah, definitely. So, could you tell us now then? Well, I mean, a great journey. I mean, can you tell us about this group managing director Gedu role that you 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 you're now you now kind of taken on? Yeah, it's a it's a fantastic role. And uh, I work with amazing people, and mm. it's a fantastic institution. GBS has has grown, and Gedu is growing very fast. And mm. uh, you know, our mission is really to give opportunities to people like me when I was in construction, mm. which is mm. you know, people mm. that wouldn't normally have had the opportunity to go and mm. do a degree. Um, mm. To give access to those people and yeah. give that mobility to those people, and that's what really resonates me the most about mm. GBS, mm. you know, mm. and the people around me. We're all committed to yeah. helping our students get into higher education, but actually mm. succeeding as well. Yeah. And we yeah. spend a lot of our time and energy to get that done. So mm. that's for big message for our students. We are here to help you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, when I was GBS UK managing director, one of the highlights of my week was Tuesday lunchtimes where we had the meet the exec 
sessions and we would have students come in <laughs> and talk to the, mm, the mm. senior execs of the business and mm. uh, and they'd be talking about all of the things that I remembered, yeah. you know, were the challenges, yeah. you know, yeah. am I doing yeah. the right course, mm. you know, mm. what are my assessments going to look like, mm. you mm. know, how do I get access to this service? Yeah. So all of those things are really, we're all here to support our students yeah. around that and uh, and we we're always listening to our students. It, it seems that GBS and GEDU, uh, uh, it's a good model, isn't it, to kind of, in, it's in a, a way really good encouraging model. people yeah. coming in by what used to be called non-conventional ways. That's and, right. That's right. Mm. And um, and it's interesting, as you know, over the past 15 years, you know, the, the whole of the higher education mm. sector has been disrupted. You yeah. Know? yeah. In the old days, it was all about leaving school, mm. maybe a gap year, and mm. then straight in, and mm. then coming out, and then masters. Mm. Now people are wanting to do different things. They want to, they want to get a degree from the UK, mm. and they want to be mm. studying in Malta. Yeah. You know, we provide yeah. that. Yeah. You know, and so it, it really it gives a good flexibility to people's mm. own specific situations mm. Mm. and uh, economic circumstances as well. You know, yeah. because it is yeah. easier to actually do a component elsewhere yes. rather than study yeah. in the UK. Yeah. So we. Really really uh, uh, all about providing those opportunities for people to get into higher education yes. and succeed. It's great. Um, uh, well, there's some questions about you and your role now then, about the kind of how do you manage the stresses that come with such a wide portfolio and such a you know, amount of responsibility and about your work-life balance as well. Sure. Um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting question. And I... I am, uh, you know, I'm someone that is really committed to high performance, mm. um, and I'm someone that really wants uh, both my employer, my business to succeed, but also the people that work with me in the team. Mm. And um, I had a, a, a great opportunity to to do a leadership program at Oxford University, mm. which um, which was I was sponsored. By a previous employer, mm -hmm. uh, otherwise I probably would not have got the chance. Um, and we had, you know, thirty executives from across the world come, top executives, and, and we we learnt how to be leaders in a way that was inclusive, was ethical, mm -hmm. um, and really drove high performance from the bottom up. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and that was a fantastic experience. I think it was thirty day course or something, completely mm -hmm. submersive. Mm -hmm. um, and and I tried to. So I try to adopt those principles every day. Yeah. Um, there are sometimes challenges around expectations uh, and managing expectations because we all want to do things in a, in a particular way at a particular yeah. speed. Mm. Um, uh, but but sometimes it's about getting the right foundations in place so it's mm. sustainable. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and what I look for is to make sure that we've got a a, a sustainable business here mm. for the long mm. term mm. and is going to be successful over the long term. Yes, excellent. Um, what, what, we've we've covered some of this, but what extra advice would you give to uh, GBS students uh, currently study, studying and their lives and their work and their studies and all of that? Really? Yeah, the big the big thing for our students is obviously the work life balance. Yeah. You know, uh, and and trying to carve out enough time in your week to mm. commit to your studies. Mm. You know, and as we said earlier, you know that time that you carve out that you commit mm. will mm. pay back. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, may, yeah, yeah. it may seem like it's not going anywhere at the moment yeah. because it's a long journey. Yes, yeah. but at the end, you know, I've had some of my nephews and nieces graduate recently, and just reflecting on, you know, when they come out of that process, they're a different person. Yeah. You know, we've always yeah. spoken about the rites of passage. Yes, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, and so being here studying will change your life. Yeah. Yeah. It will improve your life. Yeah. It will enhance your relationships. Mm. It will yeah. make you a better human being. Yeah. Um, and, of course, it will also give you lots more opportunities going forward. Yeah. So the yeah. big thing is stick with it. Stay committed. Reach out to GBS people around yeah. you if you need support. Yeah. We're yeah. here for you, and you will be a success. That's fantastic. That's fantastic advice. I feel that you know, um, my, one of my daughters, and also I suppose me when I was young, would, I, I couldn't give up today for tomorrow. Mm. And I, mm. that's why you know, probably I came by that non-conventional route into yes. education. Yes. And one of my daughters definitely did. You know, she she's only now beginning to realise it. You have to sacrifice some of today for, for you tomorrow. do. You yeah. do, and when 
when the sun's no, no, no. <laughs> shining outside. I know that's very difficult. Mm. All your friends are down the pub. I know yeah. that's very difficult. Mm. But again, you know, it also comes back, and you know this, when you find your passion, you yeah. don't mind so much. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I used to love, you know, sitting for hours and just reading, mm. you know, mm. philosophy for because mm. it, it just I, it just really it just float, floats my yeah. boat. So yeah. so finding that is part of the yeah. part of the jigsaw puzzle that's very important, I yeah. think. Well, I suppose our, 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 the final question is a, a final piece of advice about um, that we could say that to send to all our students about the opportunities you might take, about the kind of idea of where the opportunities lie and how you respond to them. Yeah, I think uh, that's a question that a lot of our students will be asking, you know, uh, while I'm studying or when I finish studying, how do I make the most of it, you know? Um, and, I, and I think, you know, my advice is is really just to make sure that, you know, when those opportunities are there, that you have completed your studies successfully, that you, you know about your profession or your vocation very well. You can speak passionately about mm -hmm. it, that you, you are engaged about it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think as you start to meet people on your journey, you know, you will have those conversations. They will see that you are ready. Mm -hmm. They will see that you have the knowledge and understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's how those opportunities will come out of those conversations, those discussions. Um, and of course, there's a whole load of other formal ways that you can do that mm -hmm. via, you know, applying mm -hmm. for jobs and all of those. But again, all of that is, you know, when you get to the interview, yeah. you will be ready, you'll be more confident, yeah. you know, yeah. you'll think about all those hours that you sacrifice, mm. you know, yeah. and that's when they will pay off. Yeah, definitely. And and then, and in this sense of it's not a it's not a predictable path, is it? These things just come come sometimes and you know, yes. in the workplace, opportunities arise when in your job, in your roles. Yes. And you have to be open to all of that, don't you? So true. Uh, you know, some people have got lots of networks yeah. uh, and they leverage those networks very easily. Yeah. Others, uh, you know, maybe have to work a bit harder at that. Yeah. But, you know, there's so many opportunities to be involved, you yeah. know, in all sorts yeah. of things, uh, whether it's art or whether it's a profession or, mm. or an industry group or mm. all of those things, you know, contribute to who you are as an individual and, yeah. and yeah. preparing you mm. for that perfect role when it yeah. comes your way. Excellent. The door will open and you'll be ready. Excellent. Thank you very much, Leo. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Wonderful. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this GBS podcast. GBS is a provider of higher education with flexible courses in business, finance, accounting, healthcare, technology and construction. With courses from HND to bachelor and master's degrees and study options that include weekdays, evenings and weekends, there's a course that's right for you. Visit globalbanking.ac.uk or email the GBS team at admissions at globalbanking.ac.uk. Mm.